Terrapins upset number one ranked North Carolina. Maryland teams over the years have beaten five number ones, beginning with Bud Milligan's 1959 team, upsetting Carolina. In 79, Lefty Drizel's Terps outlasted number one ranked Notre Dame. And in 86, number one ranked North Carolina. Len Bias' 35 point performance is now legendary. Gary Williams' turn at Maryland came in 95 with the help of Dwayne Simpkins and Johnny Rhodes. They upset North Carolina. All but one of those upsets took place in the friendly confines of Cold Field House. Tonight, 250 miles south in Durham, it's Duke. This is not Cold Field House. Tonight, the Terrapins come into one of the most intimidating arenas in all of college basketball. Cameron Indoor Stadium and every one of the 9,300 fans will do everything they can to keep Duke number one. Two top 25s tonight, it's Maryland and Duke. And hi everybody, I'm Tim Brand along with Dan Bonner. Glad to have you along, this game should be fun. Now we talked about Maryland and the giant killer over the years, but this is not Cole Fieldhouse. No, it's not Cole Fieldhouse, Tim. We've talked about the University of Maryland and their ability to play the number one team. You can see all those victories with the exception of the North Carolina game in 86 at Cole Fieldhouse. The Duke Blue Devils, however, have a lot of practice playing as the number one team. Under Mike Krzyzewski, Duke has played 80 games when they've been ranked number one in the country. And you can see the kind of success that the Duke Blue Devils have had. You better believe that they want to defend that honor as number one on their home court tonight. There is no question about that. Duke is familiar with the top spot in the nation. Comfortable with it, led by Coach K. The Blue Devils have all the ingredients of a great team. Teamwork, a tenacious attitude, with intense defense. This Blue Devil team is special. 7-0 in the Atlantic Coast Conference. 18-1 overall. And Duke is playing at home in Cameron Indoor Stadium in Durham, North Carolina. ACC Basketball is being brought to you by Buick. By Nations Bank by Pepsi, by Bell South, by Dodge, and by Bud Light. It's a warm night in Durham, North Carolina, and tonight in Cameron Indoor Stadium, I'm sure the Duke levels will turn up the heat. Welcome back inside, everybody. I'm Tim Brand, along with Dan Bonner. Dan, January 3rd, Duke handed Maryland its worst loss in almost 30 years. What can we expect tonight? Tim, I think we can expect a different kind of game. I'd be very surprised if we had a 30-point game tonight. For Maryland, I think they've got a score inside. They did that effectively in the first game, Elliott and Akizi having 50 points between them. I think they knew they'd need to do that again. More importantly, they need to cut off those Duke spurts. Duke can throw one of those 15 to two runs at you just as quick as you can blink your eye. Maryland has to stop that. For the Duke Blue Devils, they have to pressure the basketball to make it difficult for Maryland to get the ball inside. And Duke has to control the pace of this game. They want to push it, they want to be aggressive. Enough of the prelims, let's get it on. We'll be back with the starting lineups and the opening tip right after this. Stay with us. to go. We'll take you through the starting lineups. First for Maryland. They've settled on their lineup. Elliot Akizi, Laron Prophet, Yessa Cabbages, and Terrell Stokes at the guard. Matt Kavar could come in for Stokes early. Starting lineup for Duke, it'll be Wojciechowski, Trajan Langdon, McLeod, Gomzowski, and Chappelle. Duke 18-1, 7-0 in the ACC. Maryland 5-3 in the conference, 12-8 overall. Duke will have it first. McLeod. Maryland starts in the man-to-man. -man. The last time they met, Duke hit 10 of its first 13 threes. Yes, the Cavish is matched up against Langdon. I think that's a key matchup early in the game. McLeod in the corner to Rojo. Profit can't hold it. And lost out of bounds by the Blue Devils. 
Tim, you mentioned Duke's very quick start. That was the first spurt of that game, and we talked about that Maryland's really imperative for Maryland to, to not let Duke spurt out like that, not only at the beginning of the game, but any time during the game. The Terrapins, they need to have some spurts of their own. Man-to-man -man for Duke. Maryland feels if it can hang with Duke early, it's got a shot. Yes, it cabbages. Back up top to Profit. Profit went 0 for 7 against Duke in the first game. And here's Duke. They need to keep good pressure out on the ball. Profit well, skipped a little bit that time. Tim missed the shot. Still has a bad case of the Ophers, too, against the Blue Devils. Didn't have a field goal in that first game, but has averaged almost 18 points a game since. Domzowski has it slapped back out to McLeod. He'll fire. This is for two. So the Blue Devils are on the board first. Cloud averaging almost 12 points a game, and he is a guy who can stick it from the outside. You gotta guard him. Yes, the Cavage has had a look. Instead, he gives it up. You have the feeling with Maryland against Duke that every trip, even early in the game, is important. Maryland's gotta get something going on the offensive end. There they get Wojciechowski matched up inside against Stokes. And a good help play by McLeod. Touched out by Duke. Maryland will still have the ball. Seven on the shot clock. That's a tough play for Stokes down under the basket. And McLeod first double teams and then goes and blocks the shot. Nice defensive reaction. Elliott for three. Brick. Langman comes down with it. They're running. The foul is good. He's fouled. He'll go to the line for one. Tim, and that is almost like a turnover. When you miss a three-point shot that badly and you have the long rebound, Duke able to get it out and Langdon it, pitches it ahead, and Chappelle just with a very quick move to the basket. Elliott bumps him. Elliott's got to get out of the way in that particular situation. Duke just too quick down the court. Chappelle makes the three-point play. That was the first on Elliott, the first team foul against the Maryland Terrapins. 5 nothing Blue Devils. Here's Duke trying a little pressure. And Maryland, to be honest, looks to intimidate it early. Duke put so much pressure on you, Tim. You really just have to tough it out early in the game so you can get to your spots on offense. Yes, the Cabbages is fouled by Trajan Langdon. That'll be his first. Tim, and particularly in the Terps' last two games, few people have been tougher than Sarunas Yesikavichus. And what he did is he took the ball against pressure. If they're going to pressure the ball, then you've got to be able to take it to the basket and relieve some of that. Elliott with a soft jumper for two, and Maryland's on the board. 5 2, Duke. And here's Stokes going to try to pressure Wojciechowski a little bit. Maryland stays in the man-to-man. -man. And there Domzalski gets called for the foul, battling on the inside against Akizi. That'll be his first. Now, Domzalski has stepped in, and he's the guy who has been able to get the time at the center position since the injury by Elton Brand. He and Akizi really going at it right there. I think that Domzalski's wondering what he did. <laughs> He struggled early, but he's been playing well the last several games. Here Stokes takes it all the way down inside. Back to Elliott, who loses it. Vinny Akizi tries to power in. Look how quickly Duke gets the ball out and they get down the court. Maryland resets its defense. Chappelle up top, this is for three. Boy, that clank off the iron. Here comes Stokes. Now, Maryland is not a team who reluctant to push the basketball. They like to get it quickly in the offensive zone as well. Elliott down low with the follow and gets the roll. Rodney Elliott. He's got all four points. Nice job to go to the basket. One point game. Tim Brant and Dan Bonner with his 16.50 to play first half. Duke leads 5-4 over Maryland. Langdon off balance. Ah. To Domzowski. Tim McKeezy was at half court. That's what Gary Williams has that expression on his face about. Nice pass inside to Elliott. Rodney Elliott. You know, it's a good thing they brought him. They didn't leave him at the hotel. Elliott has all six points, and again, it's a one-point game. Domzowski again. He's made the last two buckets. It's the activity of Rashawn McLeod, though. He hit that outside shot, then that drive to the basket forces the help to come, creates an opening. 
Profta tried to get it inside of Sarunas. Yes, he can, but just chipped out by the Blue Doubles. McLeod gets the rebound in the left-hand corner of your screen. There's Rose, there's Akizi standing at center court while his man, Domzalski, gets the ball and lays it in the basket. Tough to play defense out there. It's even harder to rebound out there. Duke in his zone on the inbounds play. 15 on the shot clock. Oh, great pass from Stokes to Akizi. 9-8. That was an excellent pass. Battier just not back in position. Akizi, the first Maryland player besides Elliott to score. Oh, what a great pick by Prophet. Laurent Prophet averages three steals a game. Dangerous pass to Elliott. And Akizi gets it back and slapped away by Wojo. Wojo. Great hands by Wojciechowski. That's for three. Trajan Langdon, his first three of the game. And yes, the cabbage is barking at the official, and he just got called for a technical foul. He said something to Larry Rose. He claimed that it was an illegal screen. And Larry Rose warned him, and yes, the cabbage just didn't stop. And so yes, the cabbage just picks up the technical. 15.06 to play. Now Gary Williams is going to pick up a technical. Oh, my. Oh, my. Gary, Barry, Gary better be careful. He's going to get thrown out of the game. He's got one technical now. If he gets a second, he's gone. Keep in mind, the last time Maryland won in this building, it was Billy Hahn who coached. Well, that was Gary because was Gary was in the hospital. Yeah, Gary was sick. Not thrown out of the game. Now, Gary is upset, but... But Yesikavich just was warned before the technical was called. All Yesikavich just had to do, he made one comment to the official, all he had to do was stop, and he wouldn't have gotten the technical call. Langdon hits the 14th point. He'll stay at the line. Boy, Duke is tough enough. Well, you're then when you start misbehaving and the officials start throwing technicals, it just makes it that much easier for the number one team in the nation. They just made a three. Now Langan has hit four technical free throws. Now Duke is going to get the ball out of bounds and we come back from break. 15.06 to play in the first half. It's an eight-point lead for the Blue Devils. Duke ahead by eight at 16 to eight. Now Sarunas, yes, the Cavish is right there. He complains to the official. The official warned him. Now, yes, the Cavish just complains again. And it was that second time that he got the technical. Now Gary Williams is upset and he's hollering at the officials and now he gets a technical foul. And so you've got two Maryland technical fouls. Duke has now scored four points at the free throw line. They'll get the ball. Of course, the fans in Maryland now will say, hey, well, they're a little bit antsy, aren't they? And they'll point to the game last night where Clemson ended the last minute and 10 seconds with four players against Carolina. Well, in defense of the officials in this particular situation, they did warn Yesikavich this, and he came, came right back at him. Wojciechowski from outside, underneath. And he has it batted, and Profit comes down with it. Nice defense, nice defense. Here's Akizi with a turnaround jumper. Block Jackson by Danier. Akizi's spending a little bit too much time wheeling and dealing in there, Tim. Duke has blocked a couple of his shots now. Tough shot by McLeod off balance and puts it down for two. Boy, if McLeod is going to play that well going to the basket, then McKeezy's going to have his hands full. Duke's largest lead of the game, 10 points. Stokes. Pass that was an important Jarrell basket Stokes. for Maryland. I think he was surprised he was left alone. Battier is trying to work inside. And Gary Williams just got another technical, I think. He just got thrown out of the game. That's it for Gary Williams. He's gone. Boy. Gary Williams is very upset about what's going on out there. And he just got hit with that second team, got thrown out of there. I don't think he was trying to get that one. I don't think he was trying to get the first one. Gary's got to go. Now Billy Hahn will take over as the head coach. Well, 
Of course, the last time Billy Hahn functioned as head coach in this building, the uh, Maryland Terrapins won the game. <laughs> Mike Krzyzewski gives Gary Williams a little pat on the fan as he walks by. McLeod at the line now. This is incredible. Duke's been at the foul line just shooting technicals. It was a one-point game. They've now extended their lead to nine. Maryland. 20 to 10 Duke. Seven of those 20 points coming from the free throw line. So now well, Billy Hahn, the last time they played, Duke was 97% from the free throw line in the first half. Now Maryland just some pressure. Now Maryland's got to regroup here. They could get blown out early. Langdon for three. Yes. And that's how it can happen. He now has 10 points. Wow. You don't want to spot those guys six. Boy, that could be the earliest ejection we've seen this year. Profit inside, banks it in. No foul call, a lot of contact underneath. There's and another technical on Profit. Now, again, that is, that's, he takes the ball. And he sets it right on top of Battier. Now, I'm telling you, this is out of control, Dan. There is nothing physical. There have been nothing close to a fight. There have been only words. And we've had four technicals in the first seven minutes of the game. Tim, that's a taunting technical. You can't do that. Also a personal foul. Don't give it back to This one's being decided early. Billy Hahn's going to make some change, changes. Morris and Martisic, the two freshmen, will be ready to check in. How about this? What a start to this game. Duke 7 for 7 at the free throw line. Langdon tries to add to that. 8 for 8. And it's 24 to 12. Langdon now with 12 points, and Duke extends its lead. It's been all Blue Devils, mostly at the free throw line, shooting technicals. Carwell takes it to the bucket and scores. Boy, Chris Carrawell. Once Duke gets you down, they just don't let up. They keep coming at you. Now Maryland's dug themselves a great big hole. They're going to have to try to get out. Kavarik takes it down the lane. A lot of contact. And finally the foul is called against Duke. John McLeod will pick up the foul, I believe. I should think Avery picked up it the is. foul coming down William the lane. It is. William Avery. Now Duke starts the game with really an impressive spurt. Forrest fires from three off the front of the iron. Carol Well throws it away. Not the kind of game I expected here tonight. 12.59 to play first half. Tim Grant, Dan Bonner with you. Duke looking like the number one team in the nation. Perfect at the foul line tonight. 27 to 12 is the Blue Devil lead. We're at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Gary Williams is already to the locker room for the night. And the freshman Morris throws it away. Carrawell will run with it. And this foul on Morris. He better behave. Well, that's Duke just really, really pushing it. Carrawell gets the ball, and he just explodes to the basket. Morris tries to get in position for the block, but he is simply trailing, and you can't trail the Blue Devils on the fast break. Chris Carrawell on the line for the Blue Devils. So Chris Carrawell, the 6'6 sophomore from St. Louis, Missouri at the line. He's a 69% free throw shooter, and Duke is still perfect from the charity strike. And it has been charity tonight. Maryland has helped them tremendously. McLeod goes out. Burgess comes in. What we've been talking about. 10 for 10, making 11 for 11. Number 20. 
Mike Chappelle replaces Tristan. 29 to 12. Duke. And Duke keeps the pressure on. Avery now matching up against Kavard. Penetration by Kavarg, then the kickback out to Elliott. And this is what the Duke pressure does, Tim. It sort of forces you out of your offense, and you take a shot. Now, Elliott can certainly make that shot, but it's not in any offensive set. Nobody really in position for a rebound, so when you miss it, Duke takes it and runs the other way. Avery from the They're like sharks, and they can sense the blood in the water. They're just coming after you. 20-point Duke lead, and we still have 12 minutes to play in the first half. Here's Elliott. Another turnover. They're not really in any kind of an offensive set at all, Tim. get a couple to go in the basket so they can start feeling comfortable on this end of the court. And there's Yessa Kavish is taking it to the basket and drawing the foul. This foul is on Langdon. That'll be his second. 11.36 to play first half. It's a 20-point Duke lead. Billy Hahn now coaching with Gary Williams in the locker room. Well, 11.36 to play first half, 32 to 12 is our score. Be sure to check out the ACC.com, the official website of the ACC for the latest scores, interesting insights into life in the ACC, and a chance to win tickets to the 1998 Men's Basketball Tournament compliments of Nations Bank. And if you win, come on down, get that autograph from Dan Bonner. He'll be signing. <laughs> Tim, we talked about Duke in their spurts, 23 to 4 since the first technical was called in favor of Blue Duke. Boy, it's been all Duke. 7-0 in the ACC, trying to extend that to 8 right now in complete control of this game. Tough shot there, but a big rebound. They kick it back out to Rojo. Chappelle off the iron. Now Maryland would like to get the ball down the court and get some easy baskets themselves. Here's Profit for three. Air ball, and Price will run. Play quickly, but you also want to play under control. Tim. Three more for Walter Housley. Wow. 35 to 12. Timeout Maryland. And Billy Hahn signals for the 22nd timeout. Tim, once these guys, the Duke Blue Devils, get on a roll, they're awfully difficult to contain. Nations Bank, a corporate partner of the ACC, presents this salute to excellence question. Who is the only Duke player to have been named both ACC Rookie and Player of the Year during his career? Log on to the internet address on your screen with the correct answer before our telecast on Saturday afternoon. And you will be entered for a chance to win a pair of tickets to the 1998 ACC Men's Basketball Tournament. Compliments of Nations Bank. Well, if you're just joining us, you've missed a bunch. 10.37 <laughs> to play first half. It's 35 to 12 Duke. Gary Williams, two technicals, has already departed the premises. Four technicals against Maryland already in this game. Here's Stokes. Nice pass. Left side blocked by Morris and the foul. On Chappelle. What a pass. Maryland foul number 44. Duke is as impressive a team in transition as you'll find. Seven different players have scored for the Blue Devils. That is just an outstanding pass. The foul by Morris. But again, Duke creates the situation where they're attacking, attacking, attacking. Maryland just not back sufficiently quickly on defense. Duke is perfect at the line. Chappelle now with four Number points in the game. For the turf, the line, the 12 for 12 with the line. Profit comes back in. Morris goes out. Four technicals against Maryland, and the, there hasn't been a punch thrown. Tim, the problem for the Terrapins right at the moment is we've played 10 minutes in this game, and they only have 12 points on the offensive end. That is not going to cut at a 48-point pace against Duke. 
Jesse Cavage is going to pass inside. Martinsich banks it in, and he's fouled by Domzowski. No, that was not a foul, Tim. They ruled that it was goaltending oh, goal okay. Domzowski, so the basket counts anyway. So Maryland makes a positive trip. 37-14 for the Terrapins. Well, of course, Maryland, there's no such thing as a 23-point play, Tim. And what the Terrapins have to do, they are extremely capable offensively. They've got to tighten it up defensively and try to come back in the game slowly, not try to get it all back at once, as Clemson demonstrated and as Michigan demonstrated. You can come back against the Duke Blue Devils, but you have to play well, and Maryland hasn't played well yet today. Fifth turnover for Duke. Ricky Price called with the violation. 37-14 is our score. Well, the pace that Duke plays, they're going to throw it out the door a little bit. You have to make them pay for it. Man to man for the Blue Devils. Inside to Akizi. Nice move, and he loses it out of bounds. Last touch by Duke. Maryland beat Clemson last weekend and now has won five of six. Duke, the only unbeaten team in the league, beat Virginia last weekend by seven. Mike Chappelle will get a rest. Shot clock really has not been a factor in this ballgame. As you would not expect it to be here. Maryland playing with Duke. Yes, the Cabbage is running one hander. There's Duke. They got two guys ahead of the pack again. Great look. Langdon couldn't handle it. So turnover number six. Tim, let's take a look at Obina Ikizi down here in the low post. When the ball goes into Ikizi, what is Ikizi going to do with it? He's going to catch the ball now. He's got the side cleared. Now the help comes. Now the help's still there. He's got three guys collapsing. He doesn't find the open man. They're fortunate to keep the ball that time. Here's Elliott up top. Yes, the cabbage gets doubled down on. Ikizi's got a fire when he's got that shot open. Oh, nice Instead, pass. he goes to Elliott. Elliott's fouled on McLeod. Well, Tim, as opposed to the play we just showed you, that time Akizi did a nice job recognizing where the opening existed. Akizi taking a chance, barreling to the basket like that, but showed great body control for a big guy to avoid the charging foul and get the pass to Elliott. So Rodney Elliott, the line, he averages 15 points, 71% free throw shooter. He's having a fine season, as a matter of fact. Last week, Bert Smoke, the mayor of Baltimore, declared it Rodney Elliott Day in the city of Baltimore, where he played at Dunbar High School. He now has seven points in this game. Gets the roll on the second one. 37-16 as Maryland tries to cut into the Duke lead with 8.53 to play first half. Maryland does a nice job pressuring the ball. They're going to try it here. Terrell pulls up for the jumper and drills it. You can get past that first line of pressure. Generally, you're going to get an open shot. It's easy with a jump hook. That's a tough shot over the 6'11 Gonzalski. Ojo pulls up off the iron. You mentioned the Michigan game. That's Duke's one loss. Duke had extended the lead. It looked like that was a blowout, and that game over. Duke came firing back and won it. But that's a tall order, and that game was at Michigan. Well, Clemson was down 24 and came back and had a shot to win the game here in Durham. So Maryland's just got to tighten it up on the defensive end and play with a bit more confidence on the offensive end. Profit jump stop to Elliott. Banks it in, yes. And that's a nice job. The Duke defense doing some things to try to confuse the Terps, and that was an excellent decision that time. Stay tuned at halftime for Bell South. You call the play feature. We'll look at big plays from past ACC games. Another turnover for Duke, this time traveling, and that's seven turnovers for the Blue Devils. So timeout on the floor with 7.57 to play first half. It's 39-18 Duke, and we'll be back after this message from Bud Light. <laughs> and rocking Duke 39 to 18 over Maryland with 7.57 to play first half. Tim, one of the Terps problems has been their decision making on offense. This is a good decision. Profit gets past the, the initial line of defense, draws the other defenders, passes to Elliott underneath. Maryland needs more kinds of positive plays such as that. 
Down by 21 with 7.57 to play. But that's 7.57 to play in the first half, Ken. Maryland is sufficiently capable offensively that they can get back in here. Blue Devils so talented, so deep. This is Profit up top, working on Carrollwell. Takes him to the hoop. Ten oh, scores. Oh, and you mentioned that Gary Williams tossed out of this game. Maybe this is a bad day for him. The last time Gary Williams was tossed out of a game was January the 29th, 1997. So a year to the day, Gary gets tossed again. Maybe you shouldn't schedule Maryland games in January the 29th. Maryland has pulled back within 19. Now. Kick it back out, lined it with the pump fake. This will be for three. That's a great job by Elliott telling Martisich, I got the ball, and Martisich gets his hands off so they don't get a traveling violation. Terrapin's trying to put a little run together. Now you got to be careful. There's the five-second violation. Second you know, violation. I think Wojciechowski does better than anyone else in the country in staying within that six feet. Stokes just never got that separation that you need to break the count. Sam Croft now warns Billy Hahn to get off the court. Billy was complaining that his player couldn't see the five count, the official counting. It's an 8-2 Maryland run. Uh, it's That may be so, but the official, there's no rule that says he's got to get in the dribbler's visual field. That'd be pretty hard to count. The officials tonight, Larry Rose, Sam Croft, Zelton Steve. Well, that's a great job by Yessi Cavett. Langdon tries to bank it in and gets the roll. That was a tough, tough shot. Good defense that time by Merrill. Trajan Langdon with 14 points now. Six and a half to play first half. Stokes off balance. Not a good shot. Just trying to take Wojciechowski one on one. That's hard to do. Duke's got a five on four. Yes, the Cabbage just now gets back. Merlin sets the defense. Boy, they are so aggressive with the basketball, Tim. You just don't have a chance to relax. Maryland now can set the defense. Shot clock at 15. Shot clock down to 10. And that's a trap. Lau turns it over. That's now eight turnovers for Duke, and now Coach K's not happy, and he's going to ride him a little bit. Although not too hard. Number 11 for the Don't have to be a five beta Kappa to know that tonight the officials have a little edge on. Duke with those eight turnovers. And again, Maryland, they're within 21. You gotta just try to whittle this down a little bit at a time. They gotta do some score. Oh, Martisich with a tough little jump hook. He has four points. He's a good looking freshman, Mike Martisich. Got good hands, good feet, and not a bad shot. That was a great shot right there. You know that hook shot from about five feet away. That's not an easy, easy attempt. Pump fake by Wojo and drains the three. And this is the problem coming back in the game against Duke. They have so many offensive weapons, Tim. 44 to 22, Duke. What great defense. Knocked out by Elliott. Tim, we talked about ball pressure. Duke with such great pressure on the ball. Kavarik has a hard time finding the inside player. Look at this pressure on the ball. Wojciechowski gets his hands up and then ruled that that ball went off Elliott. But the key to all that is Wojciechowski putting such tremendous pressure on Kavarik that he has a tough time making a good pass. So William Avery takes over the number one spot, the point position. He'll be working against Kavar. Banier takes it into the paint, working against Martisic. Maryland's played some pretty good D down the last couple of trips. Burgess, fouled by Elliott. Tim, we talked about decision making. Maryland that time made a bad decision. Rodney Elliott did going after the ball. Burgess is going to shoot a little jump hook. And Elliott, instead of standing there getting his hands up in the air, reaches in for the ball while it's still around Burgess's waist. And that he got called for hitting him across the arm. So Rodney Elliott picks up his second personal. Burgess at the line. He's a 40% free throw shooter. But tonight they're all going in. They haven't the missed yet, have they? No, they're 14 to 14. The keys he comes back into the ball game for Elliott who goes out with two persons. 
Burgess coming into this game was 17 of 43 at the charity stripe, but it's been one of those nights where Duke has not missed once from the charity stripe. Streak is broken. <laughs> they shot 97% from the free throw line in the first half against Maryland earlier this year. Jesse Cavages. Tough Boy, shot. That way that is a tough shot. That's his first bucket of the night. Once again, quickly back up the court go to Blue Devils. Burgess with the turnaround. Martisic gets it. Yes, the Cavages is running. Goal tending, the bucket will count. Yes, the Cavish is forcing the action right there. Gets the ball up and the ball has to be in its downward flight before it's a goaltend. Doesn't matter whether it hit the backboard or not. Bell, with a good effort, but gets called for goaltend. Avery shot too hard, but another big rebound. They kick it out to Chappelle and they skip pass inside to Battier. Oh! A jump ball, the possession error belongs to the Maryland Terrapins. Well, 3.50 to play in the first half. 45-26, Blue Devils. Maryland just trying to claw its way back into this thing. This game are selected and compensated by Ray Common, Jefferson Pilot Sports. Any use of this broadcast without their express permission is prohibited. It's Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Sports bringing you this broadcast tonight. 3.50 to play first half. Tim Brant and Dan Bonner with you. Duke in complete control right now, 45-26. Tim, for the Duke Blue Devils, you'd like to keep building on the lead, and they, the way they want to do that is keep pushing the ball. They want to play quickly, but they need to be under control. That last time, a little bit out of control with the Blue Devils, but Maryland not able to capitalize. For the most part, it's one shot, and that's it for Maryland. It's one shot for Maryland, and you better turn and sprint back the other way. Profit got a hand on it, back to Avery. Chappelle in the paint. A lot of white jerseys under there, and this fouls on Martisic. Tim, when they go into the half-court offense, the Duke Blue Devils, just about everybody they have out there seems to like to take the ball and attack the basket with the dribble. And if you can get by your guy out of the perimeter, that forces the defense to collapse. And when the defense collapses around the ball, there isn't anybody available to block out the other offensive players standing near the basket. Duke with 19 rebounds. And Burgess now 2 of 3 from the line. One of those nights. Maryland brings out the best in Duke. Burgess came in, as we said, a 40% free throw shooter. He's two of three here this evening. Easy with the rebound. He and Battier were really battling down low. Forcing it inside again, and now he falls on the line. A lot of contact, no call. Maryland turns it over. Duke will have it with 3.02 to play in the first half. Tim, you want to power the ball, I think, inside against the Duke Blue Devils. And here's Akizi just taking it to the basket. Battier gets his hand on it. It's very fortunate. I guess it depends on the way you look. That could have easily been a jump ball or a held ball call right there. Akizi loses it when he falls out of bounds. But you don't want to force it inside. You want to take good shots in there. And Akizi forcing it at that time. And Duke so good defensively, making them pay for it. Duke has won 16 straight games at home. The Blue Devils have beaten Maryland 25 of the last 30 times they've met. Fouls on Akizi. Battier's bucket will count and he'll go to the line. Maryland foul on number 54, Akizi, his first at the line. Tim Battier just uses his quickness to go right around Akizi. Akizi not able to get the block out. He just wallops him. If you're going to foul that hard, you better prevent him from getting the shot off completely. Battier with a great power move and converts the three point play. 
Terrence Morris to the lineup for... Boy, the freshman showed you some strength there. Showed you quickness, first of all. He now becomes the ninth player for the Duke Blue Devils in this game to score. Shows you quickness to get around to Kesey and then power to get it up despite the foul. And the freshman Morris throws it away. Smallest guy on the court gets the rebound, and he's fouled. This foul on Ricky Price, so Maryland will be shooting one and one. Price missed that basket in transition and made the mistake that many guys do. You miss a shot, you figure you should make it go after the ball and commit the foul. Billy Hahn is upset with his team at the moment because, again, that last time Morris did not make a good decision trying to pitch it inside the Martish. It's their Duke Number 12. dominating the game Terrell on the back. On the line. More than doubled Maryland rebounding. So Terrell Stokes at the line. And he squeezes the first one in. Terrell Stokes, Stokes was sat down by Gary Williams for several games and let Matt Kavar come in and start at the point. Stokes has played very well since getting his starting position back. Price left alone. He's beyond the arc. You know, this is like you're on a railroad tracks. The freight train runs over you, backs up, and runs over you again. Blue Devils on fire. Profit offensive. That's two on profit. Tim, the Duke Blue Devils all evening long have shown the ability to get behind the defense. You got two guys out running, and as we stop it right here, look at. Right there, that's Ricky Price, and there's no Maryland players with anywhere close to him. On the fast break, Duke out ahead. Price able to get the ball. You give that young man that much time, he's going to fill it up. The key there again, Duke has two players out in front of Maryland in transition. Blue Devils on fire, and they love it here at Cameron. Wow. Tim, again, the problem for Maryland is they're struggling here offensively, and as Duke keeps pouring it on, Maryland just can't match him offensively. Coming up on Saturday, ACC basketball continues as the Wolfpack of NC State travels down Tobacco Road to Clemson to take on the Tigers. Game time there, 4 o'clock. NC State finally starting to get healthy. Tim Wells is back this week. Clemson ended up with only four players on the court for the last minute 10 seconds last night against North Carolina. Six players fouled out of that game for Clemson. Tim, it's hard enough to play against North Carolina with five guys. I can't remember being in a game in person where they had four guys playing against five. McLeod with a nice drive down the middle. Virtually uncontested. Tim, he doesn't really operate down inside like the classic center does, but he gets the ball on the perimeter and he's hard to guard out there. This is Morris. And Morris is fouled. He'll have three shots coming. This is Duke's largest lead of the game with 126 to play in the first half. The cloud commits that foul. You never want to foul the three. Eight on the team. And shooting for the Terrapins, number 44, Terrence Morris. Billy Hahn not happy with the way his Terrapins are executing either on an offensive or defensive end right at the moment. Three shots. So Terrence Morris, the freshman, will be shooting three. And he makes the first one. He's been in double figures the last two games. He was shell-shocked in the first game against Duke. Did not play well at all. Tim, the, the kind of pressure that Duke's able to throw at you is something that your coach can't tell you about. You really have to experience it. Well, and to be honest, he played in a league in high school where it was really not a physical league. Tim, one of the problems today is three-point shooting. Maryland has not hit a three-pointer in the game. They're 0 for 4. Duke, 6 of 16. Not a great percentage, but 6 to 0 in three-point baskets sort of makes a difference in the game. Of course, now has three points and is 54 to 30. Terrapins find themselves in a huge hole, and Wojo now turns it over. That's nine turnovers for Duke. 
Krzyzewski obviously feeling that Wojciechowski was fouled. I think maybe he's feeling lonely out there. Maryland's got four technicals against him. He doesn't have it. He might want to get one. This foul called against Wojo. Now it's called against Domzowski, Tim. You're right. That'll be, that'll be his third. Trying to operate against Martisic, pushing away from the basket, and he pushed him with his leg. That was a signal that the official gave. Yeah, it's been a tough night for Domzowski. He hasn't played that many minutes. Talk about your defensive pressure. Steve Wojciechowski continues to move. And there's the foul. The left-hand portion of your screen is where the foul was called. I thought he was calling that right hand on Lojo, but that'll be the third on Domzowski, and we'll see that Martisic goes to the line, another freshman. Long rebound. Carowell takes it. Well, they do get down the court in a hurry. It in. That's a tough shot. Oh, was that tough? He has four points. 45 seconds to play first half. I guess this is what you mean by hitting on all cylinders. Here they go again. And this foul will be on Jesse Cabbages. And when they call a foul on Sarunas Jesse Cabbages, they give him a good long look before they get to the scores table. Sarunas already with one technical call against him. And once again, they're Duke. They beat the pressure in the backcourt. There's two guys against Avery. He gets rid of it to Carowell. So it's a, really a four on three, and Duke just goes right to the basket and takes advantage. Jesse Cabbages picks up the foul coming from behind. Duke just putting an exclamation point on it right now with 27.8 seconds to play, first half. Turks ought to just hold it for the last shot. Now Duke is not going to allow them to do that easily. Down to 12 seconds. Got to watch the five-second violation. Okay, Wojo's close enough now. Seven seconds. Stokes will take it in and try to get a shot. Passes down to Morris, and he loses it. One second. Not in that basket won't count. No basket. Wow, what a first half. It was a one-point game at 9-8, and Duke just exploded. Well, this is the situation. Now, watch the red light on the basket. Carowell goes up for the dunk right there. The red light comes on. He's obviously still got the ball in his hands. That's no basket. 57 to 30 is our score. Blue Devils, number one in the nation and playing like it. We'll be back with our halftime activities right after this. ACC basketball is brought to you by Dodge by BP, by Bell South, and by Buick. Well, we're at halftime, and you can see the number one team in the nation, the Duke Blue Devils, in control over the Terrapins of Maryland, 57 to 30. Well, it was a 9-8 ball game, one-point game, and I think everybody had anticipated two top 25s to take in this one all the way down to the wire. But then four technicals against Maryland in the first half, the ejection of Gary Williams, and Duke went on a 14-2 run and has dominated ever since. Well, while we have a chance, let's show you our ACC Scholar Athlete of the Week. It's guard Trajan Langdon from Duke University. The junior from Anchorage, Alaska, has a three-point, one grade point average in math and history. Congratulations to Trajan Langdon, who, by the way, has 14 points, draining all those threes right here in the first half. So Trajan Langdon, our ACC Scholar Athlete, and what a first half he's had. Trajan Athlete, or Trajan Langdon, rather, congratulations. It's all Duke in the first half from Cameron Indoor Stadium. 57 to 30 is our score. All up court. He decides to keep it himself and put the game on his shoulders. His shot hits off the front of the rim, but Thompson's not boxed out, and he puts back his own rebound. The ball goes in as the buzzer sounds, and the Seminoles win 67-65. You call the play has been a presentation of Belts Out. 
Welcome back inside Cameron. Duke has been in control. They are as hot as it is in this building. 57 to 30 over the Terrapins of Maryland. Take you through the Budweiser scoreboard. We'll show you what's been taking place tonight. Rather quiet night in college basketball. UMass and Rhode Island going after it down in the second half. 49 36. UMass leads that one. And it's Michigan over Purdue at the half. 41 37 in a close ball game. Last night in college basketball, Clemson and North Carolina went after it pretty good. 41 free throws made by North Carolina. Clemson ended the last 110 of that game with just four players after six had fouled out, including a technical on Rick Barnes. So as you look at the standings in the ACC, Duke unbeaten, the only unbeaten team. Carolina right behind the 7-1. Maryland in a solid third, but really struggling here tonight because it's 57-30. It has been all Blue Devils. We'll be back with the second half right after these messages. It's all Duke so far, 57 to 30, looking like the number one team in the nation that they are, and I mean, folks, they have been on a roll. Impressive first half. Really an impressive first half for Duke, Tim, but I think the big story of the first half has to be the technical fouls, and this is what started it all. Sarunas Yesikavich is picked at just in the left of your screen, right near the free throw line by Rashawn McLeod. Yesikavich just thought that was an illegal screen. He reacted to it. He got a technical. That started everything. But Duke, however, really took advantage of it. On that particular play, Carowell gets right through the defense. Duke very aggressive. And here, Wojciechowski, he's going to beat the pressure in the backcourt. And when he does, Carowell once again takes it all the way to the basket. Pulls up, sticks the jump shot. Duke has been aggressive and successful. It was 9-8. The technicals came. Duke went on a 14-2 tear, and it's been all Duke since. Well, as you take a look at the first half statistics, those 17 free throws, obviously a big factor. The rebounds as well. The Blue Devils have been almost perfect, and the score shows it. Everyone. Becom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive presentation of ACC Basketball is brought to you by Food Lion by your Carolina Chief Eagle dealers by Nationwide Insurance and by Advance Auto Parts Well, Duke has more than doubled Maryland's rebounding production, and the Blue Devils have been almost perfect at the free throw line. Four technicals against Maryland, and it's 57-30 as we begin the second half. Tim Branton, Dan Bonner with you at Cameron Indoor Stadium. This place is rocking, and it is hot, and Duke is in complete control. Duke Blue Devils are one of those teams, Tim, that you give them just a little leeway, and they are going to take advantage of it. And the four technical fouls, obviously, allowing Duke to get to the free throw line and having the opportunity to score eight points. You know how many of those eight points they scored? Every single one. They get an opportunity, they take advantage of it. Trajan Langdon with 14 points, three of five. From out long range. 7-0 in the conference, winning by an incredible average margin of 21 points per game. When's the last time you saw that? Well, Tim, you keep asking me all these when was the last time questions, and I don't have answers for them. <laughs> last time these two clubs played, Duke hit 14 trays against the Terrapins. One thing that has troubled Duke in the first half and now in the second turnovers, that'll be the tenth of the game for the Blue Devils. Tim, but you look at the Maryland Terrapins, they are a team that can score very, very effectively averaging almost 82 points a game on the year, and they're on a 60-point pace now. Elliott scores quickly. But they haven't been able to get it done offensively. Outstanding entry pass to get it into Elliott. He's the high score for the Terrapins. Nice pass inside the dome. Zoski puts it on the floor and can't get it to go down. Good defense that time. Zoski didn't catch the ball cleanly, Tim, and as a result, he had a hard time making his move. Yes, the cabbage is for three. 22 point lead. This is the kind of start Maryland needed. Get a quick 5 0 run and turnover number 11 for Duke. Duke's only loss came at Michigan, 81 73, early in the season. 
Knocked him out of number one. They recaptured that after Maryland beat North Carolina. Maryland spreads the floor a little bit. Look for the back door. To Akizi. Sat up on the rim for a while, wouldn't go down for him. Maryland's gotten some good shots. And obviously, if you're going to come back from a 27-point halftime deficit, you're going to have to shoot the ball very well in the second half. Cloud has been very effective, headed toward the basket, and he's going to... This foul is against Elliott, and for Elliott, that is his third, and he picks it up early here in the second half. Cloud is a guy who... Technically is the power forward, I guess you would say, for the Blue Devils, but he does not play down on the inside. He's not really a back-to-the-basket kind of guy, and he's giving Maryland fits taking the ball to the goal. Chappelle matched up against Akizi, wanted to take him. Instead, crosses it to Wojo. Kalsowski walks. Boy, they're turning it over quickly here in the second half. That's three in this half, and it's 57-35. Maryland making a little bit of a run. Well, see, Duke having trouble. Nomsalski didn't even catch the jacket that Battier was throwing to him. They had a turnover on that particular play. We say Duke lost a, a lead in the second half against Michigan. They lost 23 points in the 24-point lead against Clemson. And the push off by Akizi. So Vina Akizi is called for the personal foul. That's his second. That's a place where Maryland would really like to go, particularly with Battier matched up against Akizi on the inside. Akizi bigger and stronger, but that time Akizi held him off with the arm and got called for the foul. Langdon fouled by Jesse Cabbages. That's the real Jesse Cavages. Jesse Cavages acknowledging that bomb. In fact, he banged himself on the head, knew he made a mistake. Team's foul number three. Frustration of Billy Hahn, who's taken over. Since Gary Williams was ejected with two technicals. Two shots. Gary Williams got that second second technical, Tim, with 14 minutes and nine seconds remaining in the first half. So Gary lasted less than six minutes in this game. Langdon now with 15 points. What a night he's having. He's having a fine year. Leading Duke in <laughs> scoring. Average of 14 a game. All ACC, National Player of the Year candidate. So the Wojciech House is going to get another five-second call. Five second. See, Wojciechowski does a great job keeping within the six feet. That's what the rules say. It's five seconds closely guarded while you're dribbling as long as the defender is within six feet. And Stokes dribbles the ball, gives that bounce, tries to drive him off, but Wojciechowski will not be driven off. He just as well try to take the ball right past him. Oh, nice Locked play. Locked by Chappelle takes it right back up. Oh, good play defensively, then a great play offensively. Chappelle's got a little bit of a quick bounce there, doesn't he, Tim? Gets it blocked, goes right back up and secures it. Maryland throws it away. Matty wisely pulls it out. Now they go down to McLeod. Turn around jumper, yes. Basket by Rashad McLeod. Mike Szeski up. He's got the, wants the crowd to get excited about it. He's afraid his fans are going to get bored. So a 20-second timeout with 16.37 to play. How about this? 63 to 35, Duke. Another look at our Nations Bank ACC Salute to Excellence question. Who is the only Duke player to have been named both ACC Rookie and Player of the Year during his career? The answer? Yep, Big Mike. Rookie of the Year in 77 and Player of the Year in 1979. There we go, Mike Jeminski with his number retired. I would add the comment that that was also my number at Virginia, so they didn't retire my number at Virginia, but they did here. And there's McLeod, gets the shot blocked, and that's two consecutive plays where Duke has gotten shots blocked but recovered the ball and stuck it back in the basket. The story goes that you helped Jaminski reach all those <laughs> accolades. Here's Stokes. He throws it away. 
I'd like to take credit for that, but Mike is a little younger than I am. And here's Duke. They continue to push it. Terrapin standing around a lot now. Chappelle with it. Little pump fake. Oja has to be down. Gives to the right side. Maryland standing around. White jersey's going after it, and the keys he's called for the personal foul. That's three on the Keezy. Maryland not only in deep trouble score-wise, but now they're in foul trouble. This is a situation where Duke is able to take advantage of the matchups. Obina Keezy is going to have a hard time guarding Battier. In fact, he turns around, looks for Battier, but doesn't find him. Battier, with good quickness, gets to the basket and draws the foul. Battier is hard for Akizi to guard, but Akizi should also be difficult for Battier to guard, but Maryland has not been able to take advantage of that matchup. Duke now nine offensive rebounds, the Terrapins with only one. Akizi and Stokes go out as Kavark and Morris come in. Battier misses the second one, and the freshman who just checked in pulls the rebound for the Turks. Well, you still have another advantage down on the inside, at least in terms of size, with Martisic going against Battier. Running one-hander by Yessa Cavages. Too hard. Duke's running. Oh, they got Langdon over here in the corner. All alone. Oh, he walked. Wojciechowski calls, causes so many problems. He is so aggressive, so intense, and so talented. We'll be back after this message from Niccolo. DC Basketball is brought to you in part by Amico and by Toyota. And tonight by the Duke Blue Devils and the Cameron Crazies. Maryland scored the first five points of the second half, then Duke scored six straight. And the Blue Devils now lead 63 to 35. Tim, obviously, you've got to play very well if you're going to come in here and beat the Duke Blue Devils. When you get down by 27 at halftime, you're going to have to be perfect in the second half. And Maryland, unfortunately, hasn't been. What a catch. Blocked by Martisich. Not only play well, Dan, but you can't help Duke. Maryland certainly did with the four technicals. Cloud kicks it out. Oh, what a nice Maryland's step back. And Martisic with the rebound. And as you said, Maryland lost its composure early in this game. Tim, to be perfectly frank with you, that first technical that got everything started, we could see very clearly that Sarunas Yesikavish was thought that he was screened illegally, and he gestured to the referee that he thought he had been screened illegally. The referee pointed at him, told him, that's enough. Saruna started to turn away, but then went back and made the same gesture, and he got himself teed up. He was warned, but went ahead anyway. Yeah, and that's the point. I mean, the replay showed that he had an argument, but after he was warned the first time, then he had to just go on and walk away. Artis is left alone at the foul line, and then Wojo strips it. Look at the hustle by Wojciechowski, and the pin! Makes it a 65-35 game. I think Billy Hahn just received a warning. You know, if looks could kill everybody down there, it'd be dead. <laughs> you can really feel for Billy. But you have to love the way Wojo plays. Showtime for Duke now. Boy, that was a physical transition. No whistles. Early in the game, everything was called. Now they're letting them play. Inside to Elliott. And Elliott is fouled. Duke this guys foul are, will be on Battier, I believe. Duke guys are dragging just to... Foul is on 
Vanier. Duke just keeps coming at you and coming at you. Wojciechowski, now understand they're ahead in the game by 28 points. Wojciechowski dives for the ball, gets it, picks it up, gives it to McLeod. Mike Krzyzewski was a little bit worried earlier that the fans were bored. They don't look bored right there. Enjoying themselves, and well they should. It's all Blue Devils as Rodney Elliott is at the line for Maryland. And of course, Duke about as good as you can be way ahead of the conference in generating turnovers. The turnover margin, that means that Duke has almost 10 fewer turnovers than their opponents per game. Duke forces 10 more opponent turnovers than they commit. And when you do that, that's 10 extra possessions of possible 20 points. Coach K makes wholesale changes now, brings in all new players. Elliott with 13 points, he averages 15. And the problem, he brings these guys in off the bench who are very, very fine players, and they're out there playing for minutes, and so they don't care that they're ahead by 19 or by 30 points or 29 points, I guess it is now. They're still going to get after it. Avery will play the point. And they turn it over. Ricky Price stepped on the line, so Maryland gets it back. That's 14 turnovers for Duke tonight. One of the few things that they have not done well. Now they certainly certainly hasn't hurt their game in. Bartosic over Burgess. Now here they come. Terrible. And a foul will be on profit. Battier will go to the line. Don't forget, coming up Saturday, it's NC State taking on the Clemson Tigers. Game time is 4 o'clock. NC State starting to get healthy again. Tim Wells is now back up in the lineup. Kenny Inge is playing well. CC's playing well. Clemson last night lost to North Carolina by 11. Ended the game with four players. I still can't get over that. Six players fouled out. They only came to... Chapel Hill with a handful of players, it seemed like. The bench got so short. And in that game, had a technical call on the coach, Rick Barnes. That was halfway down. He came back out. Up top to Morris. The foul is called on Carrawell. It's been a long, long evening for the Maryland point guards, particularly Terrell Stokes. You know, you got Wojciechowski chasing you all over the place, and then Wojo sits down, and Avery comes in the game. And I don't think that's any easier. Morris makes the first one. And you just get the impression that Morris is a young man who is really going to improve as soon as, soon as he adjusts to playing at this particular level. Well, part of that adjustment will be the weight room because right now he's not physical enough. They push him around quite a bit, and that's what the coaches are concerned with. He played in a suburban league, not an urban league, and it was not a very physical one. Yeah, this foul is on Burgess. That's his first. Just the fourth team foul against Duke this half. Man to man defense for the Blue Devils. We talked about their ball pressure. They've done a great job keeping pressure on the basketball. See this shot. Air ball. Again, a lot of bodies colliding down low to be Duke basketball. Tim, and, and when you talk about putting pressure on the basketball, it's not just preventing the guy from finding the passing lane inside, but that time, great job by Duke, the Duke defense, moving their feet, forcing the guy who wants to go all the way to the basket to pull up and shoot the jump shot. 13 minutes to play in this ball game, and it hasn't been much of a ball game since early on. Burgess. Burgess from Price. 31 point lead for Duke. Duke in the man to man. And again, it's very difficult for Stokes to create anything. Cut off again by Avery. Tough move by Marticic. 
Got the reverse layup, couldn't put it down. And Carrollwell takes it all the way down for the easy lay-in. Crawford at the other end. Tim, you know, in the second half, Maryland has only taken seven shots. They've committed eight turnovers, taken seven shots. It's hard to come back and you're turning the ball over more than you're shooting. That doesn't seem possible. Here's Morris with the slam dunk. Very little for Maryland to be excited about tonight, but that was a very impressive play. Even though he may need to put on some extra weight, he showed some strength right there getting it in. And a Kesey return for the Terrapins. Yes, uh, Cavish just comes back into the ball game. A Kesey will come in, and Rodney Elliott's back in. Joining Stokes and Morris. Terrence Morris on the line. He's an impressive freshman there. Terrence Morris can play the game. He came in the ball game last week in Maryland's victory down at Georgia Tech, and he made a significant contribution. Scored 13 points in that game when some of the starters were struggling. Martisich also scored double figures in that game. Big road victory for the Terrapins. I don't think anybody will disagree. Gary Williams has a talented club that may still be a year away, but the Terps are dangerous at times. As indicated with their win over Kansas and North Carolina. But, uh, Tim, let's say something else, too. This is an exceedingly good Duke team. This is a very difficult place to play. You know, there are a lot of teams who are going to come in here and struggle. Duke doesn't lose very often at home. Yes, the Cavs just caught a hand in the face. Billy Hahn wants a foul. Well, he looks down at Coach K, too. And says what is that but that was obviously not on purpose 11 35 to play it's very one-sided time out on the floor it is hot in here we're <laughs> up in the rafters where all the heat rises i mean pull back and take a look up where we are above everybody in cameron indoor stadium and partner it's hot well, and it's pretty hot down on the court, too, particularly hot for the University of Maryland. They have had the pressure on them all night long. The Duke Blue Devils really playing well. Billy Hahn, if you're just joining us, he is coaching Maryland right at the moment. Gary Williams was ejected after picking up his second technical foul. 14 minutes and nine seconds remained in the first half when Gary Williams was ejected. And it has been all Duke. Well, it really has been. And if you are really just joining us, then you can watch Elliott take this shot. And Akizi with the follow. Maryland strong on the boards here. Touch by Duke. I thought it was touched by Duke players. I think and that's going to be the call. Counted. They started to wave it off, but it was a Duke player that touched it. But I was going to say it was a 9-8 ball game. Yes, the Cavages was called with a technical. Gary Williams was called with a technical, and here's that play again. Maryland has had very few offensive rebounds. They've just quadrupled their total. And it was actually appeared to me to be a Keezy to touch the ball while it was on the rim. Here's Carrie Bell. Oh, oh, oh. has played a nice game tonight. Again, those Duke guys just have a way to get to the basket. They continue to attack. Ten for Carrawell. Carrawell's the sophomore from St. Louis. Here, Kesey is fouled. And that's something that Maryland, I think, came in the game thinking they would probably be able to do. Kesey actually had 28 points against Duke the first time, but they simply haven't been able to get him off the mark in there. Kesey was on Burgess. Obina Kesey. At the line, he's approved every year. His freshman year, he averaged five points. Sophomore, he averaged 10 points. And this year, he's been averaging right around 14 points a game. And he makes his free throw. Well, that is only his third point of the game, Tim. He's shooting. Akizi is one for seven. So I think there's two problems there. First of all, he's only made one field goal. But secondly, in a game like this, when you come in against a Duke Blue Devil team that he ought to be able to score against inside, he's only taken seven shots. But of course, the type of game, we said Duke had to set the pace. They've certainly done that. Keezy strong on Burgess. The foul from behind by Profit. 
Profit was a little late getting there. If you're a guard who's dropping down from the perimeter, you need to get there while the big guy's dribbling the ball. Once the big guy gets it away from the dribble and starts taking his move to the basket, very few times are you going to be permitted to knock the ball away without having a foul call. Burgess shooting two, misses the first. Well, it appears Duke is going to win this game. 72-43 is our score right now. And Duke has not started 8-0 in the conference since the 91-92 season. They should run the record to 8-0 tonight. Well, Burgess really sort of falls away from the free throw line. Tim, his momentum really backing up when he shoots it. Profit with a rebound. Ahead to Elliott. By Burgess, Elliott again, jump ball. That possession error belongs to Duke. Tim, and that's another story of this game. Maryland with very few easy opportunities. Maryland is a transition team. We mentioned they score almost 82 points a game. Here's Elliott running underneath. You figure he's got an easy one. No, one block. And here comes McLeod with another block. That's called a held ball, and so Duke gets it on the alternating possession. But Maryland, no easy opportunities tonight. The Duke defense just taking all those away. 3 on one with Cloud running one-hander. Yes! Now, how tough is that? You beat the pressure, you get it to one of your big guys, and he takes it in the middle and makes a nice play. The Cloud now has 14 points. This is more like a scrimmage now. There's a Keezy powering it to the basket. Boy, that was power, too. But again, that was not an easy opportunity. He got a close shot at the basket, but he had to shoot it over McLeod, who was coming on the help. Nothing coming very easily for Maryland tonight. It's only a few times tonight we've seen McLeod try to post up. Yes, the Cabbage has tried a very tough entry pass to Akizi on the break and throws it away. Oh, and that's Elliott had him. <laughs> Burgess had great position for the lob. Wojciechowski spotted it, and Elliott just grabbed him by the shirt. That'll be four on Elliott. Maryland foul on number 25, Rodney Elliott, his fourth personal foul. So now Maryland's over the limit. Duke will be shooting one and one. Artisage comes into the ball game. Kabar comes in, and Morris comes in. And Stokes, Elliott, and Profit go out. Battier waiting at the scorer's table. He will come in for Burgess if Burgess can connect. He's just two of six from the line tonight. Tim, and this is one reason. There he goes again. He's just, his weight sort of falls back. He's back on his heels when he shoots that ball. And that's one reason why he doesn't get more minutes. For your team like Duke, you can't afford to have a guy who shoots that poorly from the free throw line in the game. He's 19 for 50 at the line this year. So Wojo picks up a personal here. That's only his first. And now Maryland will be shooting one and one. Betty trying to figure out who he's in the game for. It's Burgess. Else he would have been able to come in the game before. Chance for the year. Young Maryland Terrapin coaches to get some work on the sidelines with Gary in the locker room. Well, you're Maryland just not very strong in the line tonight. You'd rather not have much work like this. Man to man for Maryland. Boy, if you're you got to move your feet on defense because Duke, these guys take the ball and they take it right to the basket. Oh, nice pass by McLeod, and this foul's going to go on Morris. Well, everybody that's a Duke fan has to start thinking ahead now to the game in Chapel Hill, which is coming up February 5th. Number one against number two. Of course, Thursday, it's the Devils in the heels. Carolina was number one for a good portion of the season. Duke relinquished it after the Michigan loss. Got it back when Maryland beat Carolina, and those two meet February 5th. Of course, the Blue Devils on Sunday, February 1st, have a matchup here against Georgia Tech. So I know Mike
Krzyzewski. It's going to be hard not to think about those Tar Heels, but he doesn't want his Blue Devils concentrating on them when they've got other teams to get it, get it done against first. Nikizi is fouled, but Coach K is probably one of the best when it comes to keeping a team focused. I mean, now he's in his 18th year at Duke, which is hard to believe. 418 wins, seven Final Fours in the last 12 years, and back-to-back -back national titles, which we all believe, we all remember. The young Maryland coaches. Look at Jimmy Patsos, on the talented left. young Maryland assistant. He coaches, he handles the academics with the players, and he's been talked about as a possible head coach. Catholic University player does a nice job with the Maryland Terrapins. And it's just very discouraging for Maryland because you come in here and this Duke is a team that can really blow you out of the game, and you hope it doesn't happen to you, but now this is twice what has happened to the Maryland Terrapins. They get you down, they don't let you back up very often. Terps double on the press, but they leave themselves vulnerable, as we saw in the last trip down for Duke. This time, Maryland gets back. Very few times tonight has Maryland been able to get that half-court defense set. Pulls it, pulls it way back out. Duke has done such a good job penetrating the defense with the dribble. Shot clock at three. Wojo fires and Morris with another rebound. It's as good a defensive series as Maryland has had, particularly in the second half. 29-point lead by Duke. Martisich answers at the other side. Martisich has done a nice job inside. He's got six points. That was a nice little move right there. Beats the pressure, lays it in the basket. Now Duke's going to try to run a little half-court offense. And Wojo's entry pass is wild, outside, and thrown away. So again, turnovers continue to plague. Duke, that'll be the 15th of the game. 7.32 to play. Well, they're having fun here tonight in Durham because it's been all Duke. Well, some folks are having fun. I don't think the Maryland Terrapins are having a particularly good time. This is what Mike Krzyzewski's worried about, the fans being bored. <laughs> Coach K came out of his seat earlier and tried to get the fans going. They were into it early. Well, of course, we mentioned Mike Krzyzewski has seen his team lose some leads. That Michigan game where they lost the lead and lost the game, and then against Clemson where the Tigers came back before dropping the game to Duke by one point. I don't think he's in jeopardy of that tonight. Bartosic with the hook. Langdon for three. And Kesey's ahead of the pack if they can find him. Yes, the Cabbage has adjusted his shot with the pressure. I think he's upset with himself that he just didn't take it up strong rather than worrying about the defender. Well, I think his problem was he didn't catch the ball sufficiently cleanly that he could find the Kesey all alone under the basket. Oh, how about that? Dobzowski with a nice shot. 77-48. Well, Maryland doesn't convert in transition on the one end, Tim, and they allow Duke, Duke to run down and get what is, in effect, a transition basket. Turnover for Martisic. Battier trying to go behind his back, and Stokes was behind his back and was able to get the ball. It's really been the only weak point in the Blue Devil game, the number of turnovers they have, but as much as they've been running up and down, you've got to figure they're going to throw it out the door some. Here's a Keezy underneath with the rebound, and he's fouled. I believe this foul will be on Domzalski, is it not? It is. Domzalski picks up the foul. A Keezy. That's four on Domzalski. Now, Maryland, you've been out here trying as hard as you can, trying to come back the entire game, and here's these guys coming off the bench for Duke, and this is what Duke's bench has done. Bring in four. Avery stays in the ball game. He's the only one. Four fresh and Avery as Keys is at the line. These guys just, they, they keep coming off the bench, and they're at least as good as the guys in the game. It's, it's really scary if you got to match up against them. Crowd 
Yellen show no mercy, and they haven't. Morris throws up an air ball, and he'll hear about it. Well, I, I don't think they have anything to worry about. The fans, that is. Five forty-five to play. In this particular matchup, McLeod has done a nice job matched up against Tatisi, taking the ball away from the basket and then driving to the basket against Tatisi. How about Avery? Avery is sweet. He is a good-looking player. He's got five points tonight. William Avery, the freshman. And I look at the way he's guarding Stokes. You know, keeping that defensive pressure on. What a role model. You bring a freshman in like that, he plays behind Wojo. You learn from a guy who is just tenacious. How about Akizi off balance at the other side? Oh boy, that was a tough shot. Akizi has been making a couple of tough shots. He now has nine points. So he's a little bit under his average. He averages 14. But it's been that kind of night. Under five minutes to play. McLeod with the rebound and the putback. Strong board work by the Blue Devils. Ricky Price got a hand on it, and then Burgess was able to tip it in. But McLeod starts it all with the offensive rebound. 31-point lead for Duke. And that's the way it's gone for Maryland tonight. Duke gets a couple of offensive rebounds. They convert. Maryland gets a couple of offensive rebounds. It doesn't go in the basket. Frustration for Elliott. He wanted a foul call. There was so much contact. Now he walks away disgustedly. 31-point lead for the number one team in the nation. Tim, we were talking before the game, and I was saying that I would be very, very surprised if we had a third, another 30-point game tonight, and boy, we sure have. I Price thought. tries to even increase that. <laughs> Morris hit hard. Billy Hahn wants it intentional, and, and it gets it. And that's an intentional foul. I think it's called because of the degree of contact. Morris getting down the court. Avery gets his head turned and then has a tough time getting back to Morris. Very hard foul, and the rules allow an official to exercise his judgment and call an intentional in the situation of a hard foul. Mike Krzyzewski didn't like that foul. He looks down at Billy Hahn. He had a word for Billy Hahn. Now calls Larry Rose over. Well, this game's had it all. Four minutes to play. We'll be back. Look at our Amico play of the game and just pick one for the Duke Blue Devils. Martisic misses the basket, and now here's Duke off and running as they did so successfully all evening long. Chris Carowell, nobody stops him. He just takes it all the way to the basket. Many opportunities like that for the Blue Devils, and they've converted a very high percentage of them. Morris. Now the intentional foul, the person who's fouled, Morris in this case, goes to the line. He'll shoot two free throws, and then Duke will have the ball out of bounds. Billy Hahn still upset. Duke has outscored Maryland 185 to 122 in the two meetings this year. Morris makes them both. So it hasn't even been close since these two met here in the 97-98 season. Stokes had a tough time getting it in. Kim, it's, it's very, very difficult. This game is playing out a lot the way the first game did, and there's a foul on the inside. That's Laron Cephas who's going to pick it up. In the first game on the strength of some pretty impressive three-point shooting, the Duke Blue Devils put Maryland way behind. And when you get way behind against a team like Duke, you sort of press because you know how good they are and you know how hard it's going to be to catch up. That's what happened in the first game, and really that's what happened in this game. After that first technical foul, the 25 to 4 Duke run put Maryland in a big hole, and as a result, Maryland pressing not as comfortable as they need to be in their offense, knowing that they've got to make some plays, and when you put pressure on yourself to make plays against the Duke defensive team that's coming at you all the time, it just makes life very hard. Well, and as you mentioned, you come into this place, you have to be almost flawless against a team like Duke, which has won 16 straight home games. 
Duke gets way up, they start playing with a lot of confidence. And again, you're pressing a little bit, not playing with as much confidence. And it's just very, very difficult. It's one of those cycles that keeps feeding on itself. 3.15 to play. Crowd still yelling for more. Shot clock down to seven. Carrawell hears the crowd and takes it up and it's blocked. And this is going to be a shot clock violation. That's the first time the shot clock has had anything to do with this game. And certainly in this case, it doesn't hurt a thing. As they melt the clock, Coach K starts to go down his bench. Singleton in the ballgame. First time we've seen him today. Stokes picks up his dribble. Crockett helps him. Good Crawford has been quiet today once again. Cephas gooses the ball and gets tied up. Possession error belongs to Maryland, so they'll get it back. There's 17 on the shot clock. Tim Laurent Crawford, only four points today. And was 0 for 7 the first time they played in College Park. He had seven points in that game, all from the line. So in two games against Duke, he's got 11 points. Laurent Profit has no shot attempts in the second half, and that won't count as a shot attempt. It'll be, he'll go to the line for the free throws, but Laurent Profit has not been a factor at all in the game. Singled and called for the free throw, I mean for the foul. <laughs> it's been a long day. Laurent Profit at the line. He fouled out Saturday in the Clemson game and misses his free throw. Averaging 16.6 rebounds a game, but as you mentioned, really struggled against Duke this year. And since that last Duke game when he didn't have a field goal, he's averaged almost 18 points a game. And to be honest, Maryland has played quite well coming into this game. They've won five of their last six. Put him in solid third place in the ACC behind Duke and Carolina. Well, they just ran into a buzzsaw. You know, people talk about how Maryland has been playing inconsistently, but I, I don't know that that's really true. This is a game that they have played against a very, very good team. And yeah, they didn't play well, but I think an awful lot of that has to do with the Duke Blue Devils. Shot clock down to 15. Sigmund shows up, throws a brick, gets it back, and travels. Well, you're right, and I think they have gotten, no, if there was inconsistency early, they've gotten some of that back and play better of late North Carolina, Florida State, Clemson at home, North Carolina State, and Georgia Tech on the road. That's a good Maryland basketball team, but let's face it, if you come into Cameron Indoor Stadium and you don't shoot the ball well, and particularly if you get four technical fouls called against you, then it's going to be real difficult for you. Fouled by Singleton, so he picks up his second personal foul in a matter of a minute. Duke bench feeling very comfortable, a lot of smiles over there as well there should be. And it's a deep, talented bench. Well, they, they lose very little when guys start coming off the bench. But you know, we've seen some funny scores in college basketball already this year. You're playing a team, particularly a good team, and if you're not shooting the ball well, in this particular case, Leron Profit not getting very many opportunities. He's only got six points. Your leading scorer isn't producing for you. The other team is playing very well. You're, you're going to really get down by a whole lot. And against a good team like Duke, it's just very difficult to catch up. For Maryland, it's going to be interesting to see how they respond. Terrapins play Virginia on Sunday. And that'll be an entirely different kind of game. Virginia. Not the kind of a team in their profit, not able to handle it. A great play by Singleton. Virginia, not a transition team. It'll be a much different type of game, more of a power game. Interesting, isn't it? Where Virginia just lost to Duke by seven points. Maryland comes down here following that up and is losing big. These two teams will play on Sunday. Four o'clock start time in College Park. Cole Fieldhouse for that game. Maryland now with 22 turnovers in the game. We've talked about the Duke turnovers. Duke with 17 turnovers. So even though Duke has turned it over 17 times, Maryland has turned it over five times more than the Blue Devils. Price. 
Tim, let's keep in mind, when Virginia came in here in December, they lost by 44. Jay Heaps gets the crowd on their feet, and Price scores. Great hustle by Heaps. Ricky Price called for the foul here. 115 to play. And let me make a point here. A building never scored any points. This is a great atmosphere and everything, but the main reason it's so difficult to play in here is the guys in the white shirts in this building are pretty good. I'd say better than pretty good. Number one in the nation. Ready to take that record to 19-1. 8-0 in the conference, and it's the first time that Duke has started 8-0 in the ACC since the 91-92 season. Morris makes the first one. Morris now with 11 points. Most valuable players the food line MVPs tonight. Rodney Elliott with 13 points, five rebounds for Maryland. But Trajan Langdon, 16 points, four rebounds. And 14 of those were in the first half. You're right, Tim. Langdon got most of his early. Obviously, 14 of the 16 in the first half. But most of those 14 were early. Langdon really got Mike Krzyzewski's kids going. Well, this foul is called on Atman Smith. As Billy Hahn starts to go down his bench now. Well, there's no sense getting anybody hurt in a game like this. 113 to play. Billy Hahn has put his son in, Matt Hahn. Matt's a pretty good young player. There's a look at Matt. You know, I have talked to Billy about whether or not he has enjoyed coaching with his son on the team. And Billy has said that just being able to spend time with his son in a close atmosphere like that, that he has really, really enjoyed it, that it's been a pleasure working with his kid. And that's that's really nice to hear. And let me say this. Matt Hahn is one of my favorite players in the Atlantic Coast Conference. He is just intelligent. He's congenial. One minute. One minute. And he is just fun to be around. Quality young man. One of the few guys he'll talk to. I can understand why you There's a look at Billy. Well, it's been some game. Maryland dug themselves a hole early on. Four technicals. Gary Williams, after about six minutes, said good night. He was ejected with two of those tees. Probably Gary's best move of the night, the way the game has turned out. Outside to Simpson. Pump fake. This is for two. Here's Matt Hahn. Nice pass. Nice pass to Watkins. Price is fouled. 30 and a half seconds left. Has this game seemed like it's taken forever? Well, it has. It's probably taking longer than forever for Billy Hahn and the Maryland Terrapins. Ricky Price shooting, shooting for the Blue Devils. Two shots. Billy Hahn, fine coach though. The last time Maryland won in this building, he was the head coach when interim coach while Gary was in the hospital. Well, a very, very frustrating evening for the Maryland Terrapins. Billy Hahn, a great competitor, and you know that this really eats at him. But in basketball, you don't spend a whole lot of time worrying about games you win or games that you lose. you got to gear up for the next opponent, and so Maryland will now be concentrating on the Virginia Cavaliers. Leafs kicks the ball. It'll be Maryland basketball with 21 seconds left. And Billy Hahn calls a timeout. timeout. And it's a full timeout. And that draws a response from the Cameron Crazies. Now they're hot and tired as well. They've been working hard all evening long. So we mentioned Maryland's next ball game on Sunday against the Virginia Cavaliers. Thank you. 86-59 is our score. 21 seconds remain. It will return after this message from the Atlantic Coast Conference. While we were away from Maryland's full timeout, Mike Krzyzewski called a timeout. It was a 20-seconder, and now we're set to go for the final 20 seconds of the game. Smith dribbles it out of bounds. 
the game in capsule for the Maryland Terrapins. Yeah, it really has been. It's been one of those nights. And Young guys continue to fight, though. Duke brings it up in a hurry. Five seconds left. A lot of contact, no whistle. Thankfully. Turnover to Heaps, and he fires it up. Well, that'll do it. Billy Hahn gives the officials a big round of applause. ACC basketball was brought to you by Bud Light, by Advance Auto Parts, by Food Lion, by Pepsi, by Nationwide Insurance, and by Nations Bank. Well, they're celebrating in Durham. Duke goes to 8-0 in the conference, 19-1 overall. The number one Blue Devils had absolutely no trouble tonight. Maryland falls to 5-4 and four in the conference, 12-9 overall. For Dan Bonner, I'm Tim Brandt. You've been watching exclusive coverage of ACC basketball.